This shows a trunk and spur type topology. This is using a Philips Dynet DDNG485 network gateway. These devices have two Dynet ports on them. Either port can be configured to be Dynet 1 or Dynet 2. Typically the spurs are run out of one port and the trunk is run down port 2 which runs down the riser. These devices, as well as giving message translation between Dynet 1 and Dynet 2, also give us optical isolation. So if we have a major catastrophic fault on one spur on a particular level, it is not going to take out the entire building. It will only take out the network on that one segment. Also worth noting that if the network does go down for any reason, that all of the devices will just stay in the last state that they were in. That means that you can't change the current state, and most of the devices do have local override, so in that sort of emergency you can override the system. In this particular instance, the trunk goes down to a management PC which would be running either DLight 3 map view or in the future Envision Manager. This gives us building-wide control where we can run building-wide schedules and we can also implement other software applications such as Traypan to implement a simple energy management system utilising IT infrastructure. We can use screen savers to perform task lighting and energy management in a simple format. We can also on that trunk put other third-party integration with BMS devices. Okay, this diagram shows a DLight 3 or Envision Manager trunk and spur network topology. However, this time we are using an Ethernet layer. When we go to this level of integration, effectively we have a DLight 3 server and MapView layer talking in Ethernet up a trunk. In a modern day building, you would normally see a fibre trunk running up the building with a services switch on each floor which would be to carry data for security and also BMS systems typically running BACnet running over IP. We can basically jump onto that network as well and use this as a transport mechanism for getting our lighting controls up and down the riser at Ethernet layer, dropping in an Ethernet bridge on each floor and effectively running the spur off each of those Ethernet bridges. Also interestingly, in this diagram it shows that there are a couple of clients on separate PCs which are plugged into a switch. This shows a BMS server and in a typical application you may have up to 100 PCs running a Traypan application where you can have a local task lighting control or local area control at very little cost. Slide 28. This shows a typical trunk and spur topology over three levels showing the network gateways. Typically there would be a switch per floor doing building services for each floor and a fibre trunk as previously discussed. It does show typical spur philosophy including the new DALI Multimaster controllers where at DALI level we have the sensors and control panels as well as the ballast themselves. It shows some relay product switching other compact fluorescent downlights and also standard Dynet controlled sensors and panels. So what we are looking at here is a typical modern day building infrastructure.